Thank you very much, Chair Moore and esteemed members of the AB 3121 Task Force. I'm Dr. Tasha Henneman, and I'm honored to be here to share my research regarding preschool expulsions and suspensions and the impacts on young Black boys and their families and how exclusionary and harsh uh, discipline in early childhood can lead to the preschool to prison um, pipeline. Next slide, please. Um, in 2015, Walter Gilliam from Yale University conducted a nationwide study of preschool expulsions and found that preschoolers are expelled at rates three times more frequent than their K-12 students. Um, additionally, uh, research later determined uh, that there was disproportionality with the three Bs. You can go to the next slide, please. Um, the three Bs being boys who are, who are black, who are bigger in stature and uh, physical size, Next slide, please. Um, I want to just take a quick moment to define expulsions and suspensions. When I refer to expulsions, this is the permanent removal of a child from an early childhood setting. We're talking about two, three, four, or five-year-olds in this case. Um, a soft expulsion, or as I refer to in my research, is a push out. And this is when an early child care program constantly is communicating with a family about the child and complaining about the child's behavior. And so then the family and child begin to feel unwelcome. Uh, and usually the family ends up leaving or feels like they have to leave um, because they're getting ready to get, the child is getting ready to get kicked out. We have in-school suspensions. These occur when a child is sent out of the classroom, usually to a director's office, for example, and then out of school suspensions. And this is when Families or caregivers get called to pick up their child early because of behavioral problems like biting, hitting, or not following directions. Next slide, please. So more data from Gilliam's research found that four-year-olds were 50% more likely to be expelled than three-year-olds. Boys represent 54% of preschoolers, but 78% of the suspensions. And black preschoolers are 3.6 times more likely to be suspended than their white peers and five times more likely, excuse me, to be expelled um, and five times more likely to be expelled than their Asian peers. And this research really garnered the attention of the U.S. Department of Education's Office of Civil Rights Data Collection back in 2011 and 2012, who compiled data from 97,000 public schools in uh, 16,500 16, districts representing 49 million students nationwide. And their 2014 report found that black children represent 19% of preschoolers, but 47% of the suspensions. Next slide, please. So how frequently is this phenomenon of preschool expulsions or suspensions happening daily? I encourage any of you to take a guess. Next slide, please. Um, the answer is really too many, 250 um, national uh, daily average uh, preschool expulsions and suspensions. So next slide, please. Um, our current system of early childhood educational services falls short in various ways. It is characterized by lack of integration of services and systems uh, that support the whole child. And given that preschool expulsions are a systems issue, I examined factors that perpetuated the problem or perpetuate the problem in my opinion, specifically these identified in my conceptual framework, which I viewed through a critical race theory lens. So you have the high stakes accountability movement and this really refers to the standardized testing in the K through 12 system that is used to measure student achievements, student ratings, administer rewards or consequences and discipline formulated from the No Child Left Behind Act of 2001. But the spiral effects of the high stakes accountability movement is translated as school readiness in early childhood, raising the expectations of behavior and learning for two to five year olds to be more academically prepared, really impacting the loss and importance of play in learning. And we know that systems of teaching to the test not only disrupt organic forms of learning, but can also create bias in teachers' perceptions of students, further widening the gap between affluent children and low income or minor minority children in the areas of achievement, graduation rates, levels of suspensions and expulsions, and also alters student teacher relationships, which are so important in early childhood. Advances in brain development research have revealed the importance of young children experiencing regular stimul stimulation and interaction with parents, caregivers, and their environments to optimize their social emotional development and further, exposure to trauma or, 
or chronic stress such uh, caused by harsh discipline can make children more prone to emotional disturbances and less able to learn because they have to uh, they have overactive neural pathways that control the fear response, causing their brains to be organized primarily for survival. And when emotions are poorly regulated, they can interfere with attention and decision making, ultimately affecting behavior. The ECE workforce is not comparable to the K through 12 workforce. Uh, wage parity, health insurance benefits, and other mental health supports for ECE educators is lacking. Additional important deep-rooted issues of culture, race, values, beliefs, and attitudes are not prioritized in training. And these inequities contribute to high turnover rates in the field, which really affect the importance of the continuity of care in early childhood education. Lastly, uh, there are many factors that can contribute to home life challenges for young children. We heard many of them today from previous experts. Um, homelessness, uh, the, these types of issues are often not considered in early education policy development. One being that of incarcerated parents. Um, an estimated 90,000 children in California have a parent or caregiver incarcerated. And of the nearly 2 million minor children in the United States with currently incarcerated fathers, the majority are under the age of 12. And these children inherit the trauma of systemic oppression. And studies show that black students are hurt most by parental uh, incarceration with estimates suggesting that cumulatively one in 25 white children and one in four black children that were born in 1990 had experienced parental imprisonment by their 14th birthday. And on any given school day, approximately 10% of black school children have a parent who is in jail or in prison. Next slide, please. So most of us can recall our early childhood experiences um, pre-kindergarten. We were probably in one or two different settings. And this is a snapshot of some of the young boys who were in my research study. And um, as you can see, some of them experienced being in nine programs in four years, 10 programs in you know uh, less than five years. And um, these young boys were expelled or pushed out for several reasons, including talking back, not talking nicely, not sharing, being overly emotional, being too hyper or too loud, hitting, not napping with the group or problems sleeping, explosive behavior, not listening, not standing in line, not sitting properly to eat lunch, moving around too much, not sitting still in circle time, screaming, being difficult to soothe, using bad language or the inability to get along with others, and reasons that were unclear to the parents. And the consequences to their behavior resulted in isolation, exclusion, their names being put on the board repeatedly, uh, policing of their bodies, as I refer to it too in quotes, uh, not being able to sit crisscross applesauce or stay on the, the square rug, uh, sent to other areas of the room, they were shamed and negatively labeled. Next slide, please. And just to give one example of this, uh, one of the boys, Sultan, this isn't his real name, but uh, at four years old, he was in a center where he was having, um, the, the program was having a lot of problems with his high energy. And Sultan was adopted from Ethiopia around the time when he was eight months. He was abandoned previously. He was adopted, he was brought to this country and he um, had a lot of developmental delays physically. And he made a lot of great strides in the first, uh, you know, three to four years of his life, but he did have high energy. And um, we know that some of his behavioral issues stemmed from the trauma that he experienced when he was younger. Well, the mother, Sultan's mother, uh, was having multiple, multiple calls uh, dis disrupting her work from the program. So she decided to show up to the preschool center unannounced, and it happened to be nap time. All the kids were napping in the room. Sultan's mom walks in, she looks on the floor and she's like, okay, I don't see Sultan, where's my son? And the teacher's like, oh, come here, he's over here, let me show you. She opens a door, a closet door, which um, was a cubby, uh, where the cubbies were, where they keep their backpacks and their items. And Sultan pops up and is like, mommy, mommy, it's dark in here, I'm by myself, I'm scared. And the mother was like, why is my son put in a closet with the door closed and not napping with the rest of the students? And the teacher said, well, the director is going to cut the door in half. Essentially, this was their solution to uh, Sultan not napping with the other children. 
which is completely um, irrespective of his trauma in the past, developmentally appropriate that some kids just stop napping at three, four years old. Next slide, please. So this chart indicates the vicious cyclical process that children and families went to based on harsh discipline tactics. Um, I won't go through everyone for, for the sake of time, but on the next slide, please, um, this one leads us to the preschool to prison uh, pipeline. So a report by the Equal Justice Society explains that students removed from the school environment fall behind academically, are at higher risk of getting in trouble, feel stigmatized when they return to school, and are more likely to drop out, never obtaining high school diplomas. This is why they are easily led down the path of criminal justice system. When daily occurrences of isolation and labeling begin in early life, at such a crucial formative time, these experiences can have such long-term effects, not only perpetuating negative self-images of the child, but negative images by their peers and by their adult educators. And labeling theory research supports that early labeling has the potential to stay with the children as they uh, move into higher grades and in, within their higher education experiences substantially increasing the chances of going to jail. So many of the boys in my research referred to themselves as the bad child and the parents reported this negative self and deficit language um, occurring all the time. And so parents were constantly having to repair that deficit language. Parents also reported that their children's emotional and developmental um, regression started to occur, such as acting like a baby all the time or Many of the kids had regressions with potty training um, due to um, the issues in their early learning uh, environments. And consequently, this also led to a shift in the boy's attitude about going to childcare, which started off very positive and shifted to negative. As one parent described, after really liking going to school, my son hated going to school every day and he would cry. And according to the U.S. Department of Education's National Center for Education Statistics, the three common criteria often used for school readiness are student academic skill, development, attitude, and behavior. So with all of those being disrupted um, by this vicious, harsh discipline, um, next slide, please. We must uh, consider alterations to oh, just make um, there is a history behind any social challenge of today, and given the time, I won't um, go into each of these, but I will say that prior to 1860 um, and even long after, education had been haphazard and a matter of life and death for Black folks as provisions for education were not strongly enforced for all children. My father, who grew up in New Orleans, had to write fictitious notes as a young child uh, from Miss Anne in order to check out books from the library. This was only 70 years ago. And one day when he was uh, walking home with books in hand as a young boy, he was approached by three men and had his front teeth knocked out. He was told he wasn't allowed to read books. Again, that was 70 years ago. Next slide, please. So although we've seen progress, we still have a long way to go. And I would like to acknowledge that California has made some progress in 2014, AB 420 mandated that students between kindergarten and third grade could not be suspended for willful defiance. Um, that legislation um, was enacted through 2018. And then at that point, the legislature and the governor extended the ban, um, the K3, K through three ban permanently which in 2019, Senator Skinner through SB 419 also um, extended that willful defiance, um, eliminating uh, suspensions uh, for low offenses like willful defiance through eighth grade. Um, and then in 2017, AB 752 by Rubio was the, one of the first preschool um, discipline bills, which really prohibited schools from expelling or unenrolling children without due process, without um, really supporting families in finding new location or referrals for a new location. Um, I'll also shout the California Commission on Teaching Credentialing in 2016 as they started to revise their statewide standards for teachers and administrators um, to promote students' social and emotional growth and development and really look at restorative justice, conflict resolution practices, and culturally responsive um, pedagogical approaches. 
And lastly, at the California Department of Education, Superintendent Thurman has created an African American Student Achievement Task Force. He's urged the governor to fund 10,000 mental health consultants and also has supported ECE curriculum to support more equitable early childhood environments for boys of color. Next slide. So I'll just leave you with these sets of recommendations. Um, we must invest in early childhood education. The National Forum on Early Childhood Policy and Programs has found that high quality early childhood programs can yield a four to $9 return on invest or per every $1 invested. Um, and previous studies have even said that um, there is an estimated return to society of about seven to $12 for each $1 invested in early childhood. Um, there are crime effects by 2050, the savings to government and savings to society from reductions in criminality due to investments in ECE programs with total uh, $422 billion. Um, next slide, please. Additionally, we need to collect data on ECE expulsions and update our dashboards to include um, suspensions and expulsions from early childhood programs. We need to eliminate zero tolerance policies and harsh discipline tactics and require more training, as mentioned earlier. Next slide, please. We need to eliminate law enforcement on school campuses. As you see, things that happen on K through 12 campuses have an effect in early uh, childhood environments. We need to involve more fathers, recruit and retain more diverse ECE workforce. Next slide. And my last set of recommendations, partner with families and deploy family engagement strategies, um, mandate lower teacher-student ratios in early childhood preschool programs. Next slide, please. So to conclude, disciplinary practices in early childhood settings that result in expulsions or suspensions is an adult issue. It perpetuates an inequity that has the potential to shatter the self-esteem and development of young black children, hindering their chances for positive social, emotional, and, ec and academic experiences in later schooling and life thus building the initial groundwork leading to the preschool to prison pipeline. Instead of treating our youngest learners like criminals, early care systems need to develop more positive practices to help reconstruct the way that black children learn, are viewed, and are treated. We need to focus on strengthening student-teacher relationships and trust while prioritizing inclusive, equitable, and quality early learning environments. Thank you so much for your time, and I'm happy to answer any questions.